the digital storytellers from the YMCA's Young Authors Academy. Enjoy our film! Today we're walking and talking about downtown Syracuse. From Columbus Circle to Clinton Square, today we're going to be taking a look at all the public art on display. And this. And even this. So get with the program. A few years ago, our team partnered with the OHA to create our downtown walking tour brochure. In the center, you open it up, there's a map of downtown, and it calls out all the different historic buildings and some of the cool characteristics about those buildings. When you're out and about downtown, look up because the design is in the details. Because they will see so many unique details architecturally and just aesthetically on all of the different buildings. There's one building in particular on South Salina Street. It's called the Syracuse Trust Building. And if you look up, you'll see these two gargoyles on either side of the building and their names are Thrift and Waste. And that's just a little detail that blink and you'll miss it. Old buildings are very important. Old buildings are the keeper of a community story. And especially here in downtown Syracuse, there are so many different examples of buildings that have undergone so much change and so much new life. And when you're not looking up, there's plenty of art to see right in front of you. And then about two years ago, our team created a complimentary piece called A Guide to Public Art in Downtown Syracuse. So as you're walking around and noticing these buildings, oftentimes there are murals on the buildings or special sculptures that maybe you wouldn't think to notice, but as you walk by and you see maybe it's an interesting shape and you wanna learn more about it, what is that? We hope that this guide will help people get in a feel for what they're looking at and understand that. So as you're walking around and noticing these buildings, oftentimes there are murals on the buildings. When you're at the Erie Canal Museum, if you, when you're entering, make sure you look across from you and you'll see the beautiful canal paintings as well. This is uh, Mule Days of Summer by Kelly Curry and this was painted here in 2014. Uh, this is an indicated to represent uh, kind of the countryside that was involved with the Erie Canal. As you can see, this, this is a woodland scene. You know, the canal is coming out of the woods and, and kind of going through a small town. So this would not have been Syracuse in canal days. This is kind of a reminder to our visitors that we're the Erie Canal Museum. We're not just the Syracuse Canal Museum. So you can come to this museum and learn about all of the canal, not just the canal through Syracuse. Uh, the one just behind us over here is our double ender mural. And that's actually indicative of the kind of building that that was during the canal days. Double enders were special buildings. On the one side, the canal would be flowing past and goods could be taken off boats and just brought right into the building. On the other side was a storefront, and this would have been the street side of it, and so they could bring goods in on one side and then sell from the other side. Um, one of the more well-known artists is a person named Corky Goss, and they uh, painted the beautiful mural that is on the first Niagara Bank building. Clinton Square was sort of the commercial and um, financial and cultural center of Syracuse during Canal Days. And that mural is uh, representative of, it's about, I think it's supposed to be Syracuse in like 1911. And it's, it's the canal at night and it's, it's going through Clinton Square and it's you know these beautiful buildings that were financial and cultural centers and, and boats. And it's representative of a time that we no longer have here. Because Syracuse no longer has the Erie Canal, I think it's, a lot, it's hard for a lot of my visitors to the museum to comprehend that this was once a canal city. You know, this is one of the largest cities in, in, in upstate New York, and again, we're here because of the canal, but people, they don't make the connection. Okay, there's no waterway here. You know, what, what significance does this have? You know, they come here and they see murals like Clinton Serenade, and I think it, it gives them a little bit more of a sense of place. Directly across from the Canal Museum, you'll find a sculpture honoring the mule drivers and their mules who worked on the Erie Canal. All over downtown, there are many other stories cast in bronze and stone. There are stories of adventure. Document of glory.
in footnotes of misfortune. There are verses for the righteous. Tributes for the Fallen. The Soldiers and Sailors Monument in Clinton Square was originally constructed to honor all local Civil War veterans. Now it is here to honor all military people. The monument also recalls the bravery of Sergeant William Lilly at Gettysburg, who mended the regiment's flag under heavy fire. Public art adds quite a bit of vibrancy to a community. The Everson Museum of Art is a perfect example of that. The building itself, a lot of people consider a work of art. And that building was the first building that he ever designed. He became this really well-known architect, and as history goes on, what a cool thing to be able to trace his roots back to the Everson Museum of Art. Figure number three by Henry Moore was made in 1961. The Everson Museum didn't open until 1968, so it was made a little bit before this building and it was a really important sculpture uh, for the architect, I.M. Pei. So it's a really iconic and important sculpture for the history of the building. I think abstract forms are appealing because uh, they can make people think very creatively about a variety of different things. Pipe Themes, Orange Number 2, is one of my favorite sculptures out here uh, by Josefa Felkowski from Pittsburgh. She was based in Pittsburgh, and if you look at the work, you can see that it looks like she's making work from metal pipes, because she was. And she's a woman making sculpture in the late 1960s, which wasn't very common. So behind me is one of our most recent uh, outdoor sculptures. It's a sculpture uh, by Sam Van Aken. What you can see is we have a grove of eight trees and they're called the Tree of Forty Fruit. So Sam is a sculptor, but he works with stone fruit and these are stone fruit trees. Uh, and he grafts different types of stone fruit trees together. So each tree will give us 40 different types of fruit. So since we live in a cold climate, uh, we're trying to go for artwork that is a little more natural and things that might rust a little less. Recently, we um, worked with the Connective Corridor, which bridges the gap between downtown and Syracuse University. Um, and they commissioned a lot of different pieces of art along that stretch that will run from the university through downtown Syracuse. One of those commissioned artists was Brendan Rose, who helped design Walt, the Lock West monster here in the Armory Square District. Walt was developed with an industrial design class uh, over the course of the semester where we went from start to finish through a public art installation process and uh, the intentions really it was about how to make something that like identified a place and drew attention to the creek and people and it was like playful that people would want to interact with. <laughs> Public art makes the ordinary extraordinary.
and it turns desolate spaces into beautiful places. Places that are less valued in the urban landscape are oftentimes the most important places to put public art. They create a sense of value even in those places, so you're not just kind of walking through dead landscapes that feel like wastelands. These places that could be wastelands actually have a little life and joy in them. Public art, I think, is, can be very important to a community. It can talk about the social interests of the community. And unlike private works of art, public art is free. You just have to be where it is to enjoy it. and it takes it outside of an institution so you can encounter it in more of a chance or random way. Public art also provides people with a sense of identity about the place where they live. Places can be a little bit generic if they're just a, you know, a path and a plot of grass, but if you put a piece of art there, the art has a unique quality to it and then so people can start to identify a place as unique. Um, so it, it differentiates places from each other. We have things here like these murals that nobody else has anywhere else. So it's, you know, oh yeah, you know, I visited Syracuse, I love that mural. You know, or oh yeah, you know, I saw that statue one time. You know, it's, it's, I think it's important. It's a mark of pride. Hopefully it also is just like, creates joy and like spontaneity, something in the landscape that you see that takes you out of the kind of day to day. That everyone should do it, you know, that the more art there is in the city, the better. I think it's good for people to feel empowered to try to go out and do art in the city whatever way they can. <laughs>